Hey guys, YouTube 100 here. Alright, and now here I am to take a look at another er, adaptation of A Christmas Carol. Now I'm gonna talk about the 1951 Christmas Carol adaptation. So, yeah, in Britain this film was released east under the title Scrooge, but here in the U.S. the film is titled A Christmas Carol. And, yeah, it, this is still also another pretty good adaptation. I mean, yeah, it's a real, still a really, really good movie. And it has some pretty good, good acting in here. I mean, yeah, a lot of good performances from, like, Alistair Sim, who is Scrooge this time. I'm in. Yeah, a lot of the uh, yeah, it has a lot of good performances here. You're in. Yeah, it, it does like tell the story of a Christmas Carol pretty good once again. This film actually does like have more in it than in the 1938 film. Yeah. Yeah, in this film, it shows like more about Scrooge's past as than the. 1938 film did. This film actually like shows it does have what was in the 1938 film with like Scrooge being at school for the holidays, but then his sister coming and bringing him home. But it also has more than that. Uh, like, like it actually kind of like shows the transition that Scrooge goes through when he, from like his like, generous self before he became the, like, the grump that he did become. Um, yeah, it does kind of just show what he goes through. It does, like, show kind of, like, how he does, like, like, just turn on Fezziwig. And it also does, actually, this time, show the death of Scrooge's sister. And, yeah, it just kind of, it just shows that he... He refuses to look after Fred after his sister dies. And it also does show, like, Scrooge and Jacob Marley meeting. And then it does, like, kind of show that their counting house was actually part of Fezziwig's business. And that's because, like, Scrooge and Marley actually bought out Fezziwig's business. And then they turned the Fezziwig warehouse into their counting house. That also this time does like show Scrooge with his girlfriend and then Scrooge's girlfriend who's named Alice in this version. Alice eventually just ends up just dumping Scrooge. Scrooge and leaving him after like she feels that Scrooge cares more about his money than her. And, and this version also does show the death of Jacob Marley. Lee and... <laughs> Does kind of show like the cold person that Scrooge really became. He just like didn't visit Marley during the business hours at the county house. And then when he did arrive to see Marley, Marley just like Scrooge just ended up basically just taking all of Marley's possessions with his money and his home. Yeah, so, yeah, the film does, like, show a lot more of Scrooge's past, and, yeah, it does kind of just, like, do a good job at, like, just showing, like, Scrooge's backstory as he just basically, like, slowly transitioned from the good person he was to just the cold person he became. So, yeah, it does, like, do a good job of telling the story of yeah, that. And, yeah, it does basically have the exact same, um, well... Not really exactly the same, but it does really have the same elements that the 1938 film did. I mean, it still shows Scrooge when the movie begins, just being, like, very uncaring about Christmas. And he turns down Fred's invitation to come to Christmas dinner. Yeah, in this version, I would say, like, I wouldn't really say, like, Scrooge is, like, nicer, but... I really wouldn't say, like, Scrooge is really as, uh, what the word I should say, uh, not quite as cold, I should say, as Reginald Owen 
was a Scrooge. I mean, I think original Owen is, was like the more... I think I liked original Owen's performance of Scrooge a little bit it more because I mean original Owen he, it just really did seem like he was Scrooge I mean he like looked perfect and he had the perfect voice for it I Alistair Sims voice as Scrooge uh, it's not really a bad voice but it just really doesn't sound very like like perfect for Scrooge like he does kind of have like a smoother voice for Scrooge than original Owen did like original original Owen Scrooge like he just he actually sounded like really old and yeah just really like a like a cold old man and yeah he was actually like did sound very believable to be like intimidating to other people especially like younger kids so yeah I do so overall I did enjoy Reginald Owen's performance of Scrooge more than Alistair Sims but Alistair Sim is still like a good Scrooge yeah yeah, Cratchit in this film, uh, I think, once again, I did like, like, uh, Gene Lockhart's performance as Cratchit a little more in the 1938 film than Mervyn John's performance as Cratchit in this film. I just, like, I felt that the Cratchit, Cratchit in the 1938 film just, like, he did, like, have more feeling, and it just showed, like, despite the position he was in, he still did, like, try to do as much as he could for his family for Christmas. And it's, here, it is kind of like the same thing, and in a way, like, Cratchit is still, like, trying to do as much for his family as he can, but I don't know, I used to just feel like... It's, like, with, I think, just, you can, like, feel more for Cratchit in the 1938 film, because, yeah, in that version, like, Scrooge actually ended up firing Cratchit, and so Cratchit really, there was, like, basically done and didn't have the money. Yeah, and he just used whatever he could to take care of his family, so, yeah, I think just, you can, like, feel more for the 1938 Cratchit than the Cratchit in this film. Yeah, but, yeah, for the, this film does have some good things about it. Like I said, it does do a good job at just, like, telling the backstory of Scrooge as to how he actually became what he did. Yeah, then what happened to Jacob Marley. Yeah, yeah the, the Ghost of Christmas Present stuff is pretty good also. Like, the Ghost of Christmas Present in this version, once again, does do the same stuff with to Scrooge. Like, the Ghost of Christmas Present does, like, show Scrooge the position the Cratchits are really in. And, and yeah, in this one, like, the Cratchit family isn't really as fortunate as they were in the 38 film. Like, this time, like, while the 1938 film, like, Cratchit used his money to, like, buy the food for his family. Here, it's like, it shows how poor the Cratchit family really is, and they're only able to, like, afford a very small Christmas dinner. And, you know, once again, in this film, the Ghost of Christmas Future really is not done very well. I mean, yeah, once again, in this film, like, the effects really aren't very good. I mean, it does, like, do a slightly better job with the Jacob Marley face in the door knocker like it does like fade in and out from the knocker but it still doesn't really look that good and also what I also really like about this is like when Jacob Marley his ghost is like talking to Scrooge I like how like Jacob Marley is like just trying to real like the way Jacob Marley talks here it is actually like really good and like Real, really intimidating and just shows like what Jacob Marley really did when he was alive really caused him to be where he is now as he is like now why well, has to walk the earth earth in the chains that he's in and because of his greedy ways when he was alive and it also like before Jacob Marley actually leaves, he shows Scrooge that there are also other ghosts suffering the same 
fate and torment that he is. So I do like how it really shows like there's a basically like a whole bunch of people that really didn't are in the same position Jacob Marley's really in because they acted the same way when they were alive. So I do like that. But yeah, once again, like the Ghost of Christmas Future really doesn't look very good. Like once again, it's really just like a an anonymous guy, man in a dark black cloak. Like like it's very not intimidating because I mean it's not really like a dark dark mysterious spirit or anything. I mean like the Ghost of Christmas Future later ends up in further in later adaptations. Like, once again, you just see, like, it's a normal hand, hand, for the Ghost of Christmas Future, and it's just, yeah, it's basically just a normal person and no mysterious dark figure. So, yeah, the Ghost of Christmas Future isn't really, like, any int intimidating very much. This movie also, like, it actually shows, like, the Cratchit family actually mourning the death of Tiny Tim. And, like, the family, like, at first they tried to, like, keep their pain... And, and sadness to themselves, but it eventually does show, like, how d devastated they really are about the death of Tiny Tim. And, <laughs> you know, it does also, this movie also does show that after, like, in the future when Scrooge dies, it shows, like, people actually, like, being happy he's dead and basically just celebrating it. And, and people are really just taking advantage and they just steal things from his house. Yes, yeah. And also in this version, Scrooge has like a charwoman, Mrs. Dilber. They're basically like trying to, I guess you can kind of like some kind of maid for Scrooge. And, and just like Cratchit, she is kind of really underpaid by Scrooge. And after like Scrooge wakes up after her choosing to, to change his ways, when he does act bright and happy, it shows that Mrs. Dilber is kind of like, like, afraid about it, because she thinks that Scrooge has gone mad or something. And, but then, like, Scrooge ends up, up, just like Cratchit, giving her a raise, and he then increases her wages, wages by five. I fold. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, once again, like, Scrooge all ends up, like, ordering a huge turkey for the Cratchits. And what I like about this one is that, like, Scrooge kind of just keeps it mysterious. This mysterious and a secret that he is, like, sending the turkey to the Cratchits. In this version, like, Scrooge has the turkey, like, delivered to the Cratchits. And he, like, secret... And he keeps it a secret from the Cratchits that it was him who actually delivered the turkey. And I also like that the mo this movie like actually waits until the day after Christmas for S Scrooge to actually like like make treat Cratchit better, like reveal what he is doing, and it actually shows like Scrooge saying that he he'll be better to Cratchit, and yeah, he holds Cratchit that he'll give him a raise and help his family. And this movie also like ends with like. A narration saying that Scrooge is becoming like as good of a man as the city ever did know, and Scrooge actually became like a stepfather to Tiny Tim, and Tiny Tim was cured from his unknown disease, and he was able to uh, get his leg healthy again, and he could walk without a a crutch, and yeah, it just like show like Scrooge and. Tiny Tim bonding and then um, yeah, just showed them walking together into the distance that the movie ended. So yeah, there's still like a pretty a lot of good things about this film. I mean, it's once again like a good adaptation of A Christmas Carol. Overall, I think I did enjoy the 1938 film a little bit more, but yeah, this film definitely does have a lot of good things about it, and it does like do some things better. Like it does tell more of like Scrooge's backstory, as I've said. From his transition to him becoming just the cold person he did. And yeah, it like does portray the Cratchit it's mourning the death of Tiny Tim better. And yeah, it does like do some other clever things differently. 
like what Scrooge does for the Cratchits, sending them that turkey and Scrooge just keeping it a secret and stuff. So, once again, this is a pretty good movie. Movie right here. So, yeah, while I wouldn't say it's as good as the 1938 film, I still would, like, recommend this if you haven't seen it before. So, yeah. Alright, so, yeah, that does it for my... My thoughts on 1951 Christmas Carol. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.